Apple has announced the new iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. What's new on the mobile internet front? Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on the new iPhone models. Now, normally we don't really cover specific phone models here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, but because the iPhone models are just one model for all carriers and they tend to stick around for years and overall as a single model or the best selling phone in the country, it makes sense to just kind of go a little bit deep into what's new and interesting on the mobile internet front each generation. And so we've covered every new iPhone that comes out. So what's new with the iPhone 11? Um, mostly Apple focused on the cool new things, particularly around the camera and the crazy amount of new battery life they have. But they did mention in the announcement that these new phones have faster cellular. So what does that mean? What is actually going on behind the behind the scenes and well there's actually a few other interesting surprises on the internet mobile technology front and one major disappointment. So first off faster cellular. Now Apple doesn't reveal um, what modem chipsets are inside their devices until um, the first people get them buy them chop them open and dissect them but uh, smart guesses are that the new modems inside the uh, iPhone 11 is the Intel 7660, which is a brand new modem. Apple has been Intel's uh, partner for a while. And this is actually a category 19 LTE modem that has got peak theoretical speeds of 1.6 gigabytes per second. That is really fast, 150 megabits upload, 1.6 gigabits per second download, but that is peak theoretical speeds. So you'll never see anything close to that in the real world, but it lets you know what the modem is capable of. Uh, it does this via being able to combine up to seven different cellular bands. So you'll also probably never run across a place where you need to combine seven bands, but the modem has got a lot of raw capability that should last you well into the 5G era. An increase from the iPhone XS of last year, which had an earlier generation Intel chip that was capable of just one gigabit per second speed. So it's a big jump up from 1 to 1 1.6 on your peak theoretical speeds. Um, quite a nice improvement there. It should, uh, in real world use, maybe give you around 20% faster in um, actual uh, cellular. Um, now the question is like, well, this will tide you over till 5G, but well, why didn't Apple do a 5G model this year? This is um, a tricky question because um, most of the other uh, carriers and most of the other flagship device makers have brought out a 5G device, usually one for one carrier, one here, one there, and that doesn't quite fit Apple's model of um, doing something that can be sold around the world that is basically identical, the same model on Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile and Sprint. So Apple is waiting till at least 2020 until there's more mainstream 5G support. There is a single uh, chipset that will work uh, across what all these carriers are planning. And the catch is right here at the end of 2019, any of these early 5G devices you can buy will be obsolete by this time next year because they don't support the way the carriers are going to be evolving to support 4G and 5G on the same frequency band. So this is not a good year to buy 5G. It's actually pretty smart to wait unless you really want to be on the bleeding edge and Apple is chosen to wait. It also comes down to their partnership with Intel. Intel was falling behind on 5G and well, rumors have it that next year Apple is going to be joining most of the rest of the cellular manufacturers and using Qualcomm 5G chipsets. So that's what's new on the um, key cellular front. There's a few things new on LTE bands. A um, few slight shifts for as far as international roaming, but there's one really interesting new LTE band that the uh, iPhone 5, uh, iPhone 11 is uh, one of the first models to support, and that is CBRS. This is uh, LTE band 48. CBRS is a citizen's band radio service, and it's actually um, LTE over an unlicensed band that different carriers can share and there could potentially even be private LTE networks like if you're in an office your office phone can work over LTEs potentially someday. This is an emerging new technology it is just now starting to be rolled out on standardized Verizon is looking forward to using all this uh, uh, CBR spectrum but potentially any carrier potentially even someday routers in your house might be able to offer CBRS coverage and well the um, iPhone 11 line and the very latest galaxies are the first phones to support CBRS. So interesting new band, it buys you a little bit of future proofing, doesn't do much right now, but it is nice to see that that is baked in. Next up, 
Um, new on the local internet front is uh, support for Wi-Fi 6. This is 802.11ax. It is the next iteration of Wi-Fi standard from Wi-Fi 5 slash 802.11ac. Now, Wi-Fi 6, again, is also very, very new. It's a standardized end of last year, and Wi-Fi 6 compatible routers are just barely starting to come to market. And it's going to take probably five years before Wi-Fi 6 is mainstream and everywhere. Um, but it's nice to have a, a mobile device that can take advantage of the features of Wi-Fi 6. In particular, when you're on a Wi-Fi 6 network, it's more immune to um, congestion and you'll get better speeds when the network is very crowded with Wi-Fi devices. So again, a nice bit of future proofing. You'll probably not run across many places. You'll actually connect via Wi-Fi 6, but it will still, of course, support Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 4 and all the prior Wi-Fi standards. Another interesting uh, new twist uh, on hidden deep on the spec sheets for the um, iPhone 11 is the um, support for a new ultra wideband chip. And Apple really isn't saying anything about what this is in there for other than um, it was promising some exciting new features that will be coming soon. And well, the airdrop feature of beaming things from person to person. Well, now you can beam to by pointing at somebody and pick out who they are by your pointing at them. It's, it's like, why is there an entire new chip just for this? Um, ultra wideband is a really interesting new technology. It's been in the works for um, uh, 15, 20 years now, but is the, um, the new iPhone 11 is the first consumer device that is using ultra wideband technology. And what this allows the device to do is it can know with millimeter precision where other ultra wideband devices are. So it knows the direction and distance to them. This opens up a lot of interesting potential applications. It also gives them a private data channel between them. And it's just, again, paving the way. Future-proofing is uh, um, there's expected that ultra-wideband is going to become a really big deal in the years ahead. First device to have this. Other device manufacturers will probably be following along. Now for the disappointing news. So there are three models of the iPhone 11. The iPhone 11, the mainstream model, the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max, which is just the bigger size version of the Pro. And, well, the Pro models have 4x4 four four MIMOs, just like last year's 10S. So they've got four cellular antennas and they can really unleash the maximum po possible um, cellular capabilities. A lot of the carriers are supporting 4x4 four four MIMO now. Um, the regular 11 model, which is replacing the um, XR in Apple's lineup, the, the lower end um, device, is almost identical in every possible way. It has almost all the same camera features other than the telephoto. It has the same ultra wideband. It has the same Intel chip. It has so much of the same stuff other than the screen and it only has two cellular antennas so it has two by two MIMO. It is because the chip is so capable of the seven way carrier aggregation it is still technically a gigabit chip um, for cellular but that's probably the peak speeds peak theoretical speeds for the 11 is just one gigabit per second and in practical usage because you can't take advantage of all the towers that are upgraded to 4x4 four four MIMO you'll probably be seeing you know, some forecasts are saying the 11 will run about 20% slower on cellular than the uh, 11 Pro. So that is kind of disappointing. A lot of the more mainstream uh, uh, four by, mainstream Android devices are now starting to have 4x4 four four MIMO, not just the super, super high-end flagships. So that Apple left it out of the low-end 11 is a little bit disappointing. The good news with the low-end 11 is it has all the features of the Pro, um, but it is actually $50 less than the XR from last year. So Apple's actually surprised people by bringing down the entry price for their cellular devices. So it makes for a lot of technology that you can get um, for an interesting price. If you are into that and a lot of future proofing, um, if you want to have the latest and greatest, but of course then next year it'll be 5G. So maybe you want to hold off for the 5G iPhone next year or hop on the latest wave here. So, there's a lot of other sites will be covering all the other features, the camera, the all the new UI stuff, the screen, the fit and finish. We're just focused on the mobile internet side of things here, so that's an update on what's new in the iPhone 11. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.